Uh, uh, blackbirds, all birds have to drink, okay? Uh, in the case of the raptors, like the falcons, they get their moisture largely from the blood from the pigeons that they actually catch. But at the same time, most birds, they drink. And uh, if you watch what they do, what they do is they get their mouth full of water and they tip their head right the way back and let gravity take it down their throat. Unlike the wood pigeon, who I believe is the only bird that can do this, he's learned to suck. So the wood pigeon has learned to suck. If you watch a bird on a cattle trough or in a, on a little pebble on a stream there as he's uh, drinking, he sticks his face in the water and he can just drink there with his beak in the water. Now, both sexes are exactly the same plumage as we mentioned. Did you know that the wood pigeon's feathers are actually heavier than its skeleton? Not a lot of people knew that, but there you go. He's an interesting bird, he makes a brilliant flying sporting target, he can fly at 60 miles an hour, no problem at all, and uh, he can fly like the wind, which makes an excellent sporting target for the shotgun, which we'll be using in just a minute. Now the female, this time of year, and indeed in the winter and in the spring, they'll be breeding. It's one of the very few birds that breed all throughout the year. The wood pigeon, the female, will only ever lay two eggs, never more. And unlike the pheasant, which could lay 14 or 16 eggs, all that shows you is that the, fe the pheasant is actually a very poor mother. Uh, the wood pigeons are a lot cleverer. Uh, they only need to have two youngsters. Have you ever heard the phrase, a pigeon pair? Nobody? Just me, is it? There's an old-fashioned phrase, a pigeon pair. When a pigeon female, she lays two eggs, they're either brothers or they're sisters. They're never brother and sister together. So they're either boys or girls. Quite an interesting bird. As I say, they can have three to four broods a year. Very interesting bird in many ways, because this bird, as I said, he's a greedy boy and the farmers don't like him. The trouble is, he has learnt that the shooter in the field is a dangerous character and he doesn't come anywhere near him. So you've got to use every trick in the book to pick your wits against this particular bird that I'm holding today. All right, okay, as I said, he's got extremely good eyesight. Eyesight almost as good as the hawks and the falcons. So what we're going to do is we're going to change microphones and we'll get stuck in. To, are we working now? Brilliant. Right, okay, first of all you need to retrieve the birds you shoot, so that's where the dog comes into this. Now whether you're on a, a pea field in the springtime or indeed the uh, maize in October when it gets cut, uh, you're going to need your dog to retrieve the birds you shoot. Now in the case of Jake here, as I said, he's only a youngster, he's a dear little chap, he hasn't got a nasty bone in his body. Now in actual fact he cuddles up to me like this, it looks like he loves me very very much, doesn't it? In actual fact, the reason he does that, I come home from work every day at five o'clock and I give him a big crashing with a great big stick. I don't do that at all, I just said that because I thought it would be funny. But anyway, now he's a dear little boy, he hasn't got a nasty bone in him. Now then, he doesn't know it yet, but he's going to be expected next year, because he has never been shooting yet, he's going to be out with me in a hide for anything up to eight hours, in a hide. A camouflage hide set up on hide poles, we'll talk about that in a minute. But he's got to be steady. So unlike your pheasant shooting dog, or indeed, uh, uh, unlike your um, partridge dog or whatever, or a wildfowler's dog, he's got to learn a lot of different tricks. First of all, he needs to distinguish the difference between the dead birds that I might shoot and my decoys. We don't want him upsetting the stuff that I've spent half an hour setting up. He's got to learn all this. Now, being a natural blonde, he's pretty thick. He's one of the slowest learning dogs I've ever come across. Uh, so uh, we'll put him through his paces in just a minute. He's going to have to be steady. So uh, we'll find out all about that from the gun dogs later on. Now if you do go shooting, you need a gun. And here I've got a rather second-hand rusty old thing. And I brought this along just to show you, you don't need to have 20 or 50 thousand pounds for a best English shotgun. This thing was dirt cheap, probably not even valued at 250 pounds. But it's an ideal weapon of the chase. The 12 bore shotgun, there it is. You can see it's all empty at the moment. We will be firing a shot with this in just a second. But I find it quite amazing how the number of people you get nowadays who write articles in newspapers and they spout off the same stuff. Guns are dangerous, they should be banned. 
I want to find out how many people go shooting. Does anyone go shooting here today? Well, quite a few of you. Oh, lots of you. And so you guys and girls would know about this, but lots of other people think, let's think, I read about this in the newspapers. Let me tell you, when I was a young lad, about this big, 11 years old, my dad used to make me uh, strip his gun. So I got to understand it properly. Never been shooting with him at this stage, and I'll show you what I learned. There's your fore end, that locks the barrels to the action. There's your barrels, a very cleverly uh, designed pair of tubes, cleverly put together so that the two barrels harmonize at exactly 40 yards. You've all heard the phrase lock, stock and barrel, it came from the gun. There's the lock here, it used to be the flint lock in the old days, that's why it was called the lock. Um, but here in the action, this is the bit that fires the cartridge. It's a really simple piece of machinery or engineering in there, because inside here there's only three moving parts. You can see the trigger, but inside here you've got the hammer, the mainspring and the firing pin, which you might just be able to see on the breech face there. Now when I pull the trigger, the hammer shoots forward very quickly under spring pressure. That hits the back of the firing pin and that comes out and strikes the base of the cartridge. I've got one here. See that little circular disc at the base of that 12 ball cartridge? Inside there is a little, very small amount of powder in that cap. Now can anyone remember the days when boys used to fire little silver revolvers that fired coiled up bits of paper with black dots on it? You know what I'm saying? Do they do that anymore? Can you still get cap guns? You can. Oh good stuff. How old's your boy? Eleven. Good age that. What's your name? James. Even better name that is. Have you ever been shooting? Right. Got a job for you. Did you ever volunteer with Chris Green's display? Have you ever caught a pigeon before? Oh, huh? he says smugly. Okay then, James, see what you can do with that, because I want you to show everybody what's underneath all them feathers. Get stuck in, good lad. Give him a round of applause. He didn't expect that coming, did he? Right, you go for it there, James. Get stuck in, man. Okay, so while he's doing that, it's going to take him a little while. So as you can see, this is not rocket science, it's just a simple, very simple mechanical device. But well, when I was a young lad, my dad used to make me take the gun completely apart. He used to have properly fitting screwdrivers, and I could strip the whole gun down to every screw and put it back together again. So there's nothing technical about this part at all. What I'm doing is I'm assembling the shotgun now. On goes the fore end. <coughs> now we talk about a little bit about how to handle a gun. See, oh, my dad was very smart. He never let me go shooting for 12 months. He made me carry a big old duck gun. For 12 months he made me go out with him after pigeons, pheasants, when he went shooting, after wildfowl in the winter, but he never let me have any cartridges. What he was actually doing, the gun, you might say big deal, but let me tell you this, if you go down to the clay shooting over there, you will see this almost every time you go clay pigeon shooting. Clay pigeon shooters have got a habit of their own, they know it's a safe background, they'll slam their gun shot in that position and shout pull. But look where the gun's pointing, folks. It's not pleasant, is it? It's empty, but it's not pleasant nonetheless. So you see what I'm saying? The way to close the gun is with the stock up to the barrels. And I learned all this as a very small boy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cartridge in there. I know that this is a three inch chambered gun, so I know that it'll take any size cartridges three inches or less. You can actually fit a three inch cartridge into a two and three quarter inch chamber. But because there's not enough room for the cartridge to open properly, you will generate very high pressures, which could lead to a bulge or of worse, a burst. So you need to know this basic stuff. That is only two inches long, we know there's plenty of room there. We'll close the gun properly, stock up to the barrels, and you'll notice right there is the safety catch. So after all of that, you might think, because the safety catch is on, you can handle your gun and point it in every direction. The answer is no, you can't. All the safety catch does with any shotgun is stop the trigger from being pulled. It does not stop the hammer from striking the firing pin. Think about this. Does anyone, especially the older generation, does anyone remember the first car you ever bought? I bet you haven't got it anymore, have you? Because it wore out and broke. Same thing, if you don't have your gun serviced every single year, it will eventually fail. And the last thing you want it to do is to go off when you slam the gun shut, like I showed you just now. So these are the basic stuff that all young boys should learn. Now the gun is joined, it's ready to go, and the barrel stays up in the air at all times. Not just sometimes, all times. Tell him, Jake, he's going to be with me in the hide for about eight hours of a day. Hey, young James is doing a hell of a good job on there, isn't he? What a good boy. We're going to show all the mums what brilliant dinner that is inside all those feathers. So you're nearly done, but a little bit more, please. 
So he's got to get, this is my dog now, not James, he's going to be right next to this gun when it goes off. So he's got to get used to fire and he's got to stand fire really well. This took me a long time to train him. Don't know why I keep scratching like that. So you got fleas? Have you got fleas? He says, yeah. Doesn't get any uglier than this, does it? I tell you, he's a stinking sack of entrails, this boy. <coughs> nah, he's a little day, you don't see, look at that. If your dog does do that, he usually does mean they got fleas, actually. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that they're rolling in something very nasty. I'm using this as an interesting example for all the youngsters here today to notice where this gun was pointing. All the time I was chatting away, I know where it's pointing safely up in the air. Okay then, Jake, well, pay attention, son. Jake. Good boy, sit. <laughs> and, you know, the speed of sound travels very slow around this bar, doesn't it? When the shot leaves the barrel of the gun, it's actually travelling faster than the speed of sound. It actually breaks the sound barrier. And that's where you get the loud bang from. And he's got to get used to it. I started off very young with this dog, and I uh, started off by associating something very loud, like his dinner bowl being smashed against the side of his kennel, which indicated food. He found that rather pleasant, the food side of it, but he didn't like the bang at first. And little by little, it got louder and louder. I know it's boring, son. I'll fire the shot in just a minute. So uh, over time, he got louder and louder there. Then I introduced a little starting pistol at some distance, and then the shotgun at a great big distance and slowly worked closer to him. And he's got used to it now. So we should be ready to go. Safety catch off. Are you ready? Jake, stay there. He says, I have to. I'm tied to the ground with a bit of string. Here we go then. The speed of sound. Oh, beauty. That was a good one. There you go. Whoa! Whoa that, that smell you will never forget. Any youngsters around here? Here, what's your name? Young lad, young shot, and he's got himself a brilliantly cut pigeon. I said they don't go a lot better than that. Well done. You mums, I don't know if you've ever eaten this stuff. These birds nowadays are fetching 44 pence to the shooter to sell to the game dealers which you buy down at Sainsbury's or down at Morrison's or all the people that supply this stuff now. Loads of people are eating this and if you've never eaten wild pigeon breast, you simply haven't lived. I'm not joking, I've eaten tons of these and they're beautiful. Are they or are they not, sir? They're good, they're good. I would say you want to take this home, but he doesn't need to and I don't know where it's been, so we're... It is smelling a bit ripe actually, isn't it? See, this good boy, Jake, stay there. I'm stood here, on top of the BASC stand, you'll see we've got some lofting poles with some flying decoys. Now where I am from there is only 25, 26 yards. That's a perfect range for a shot with a 12 bore. A lot of boys use 410 shotguns. They used to call it a boy's gun. Because there's so few pellets in there, being a smaller barrel, smaller diameter, it's actually an expert's gun, so I'll never forget that. That is a maximum range for a 410 to guarantee that clean kill. So we've got to get these birds within range using decoys. Okay, right, now we're starting to talk business now. See this decoy here? Has anyone idea, any idea at all why wood pigeons would be attracted to this type of stuff? Because they're gregarious. That's an old-fashioned but a very good word, sir. Gregarious, it means that they like the company of their own kind. Lots of birds do, geese, starlings, you name it, loads of birds do. The reason, though, that's the point. What's the reason they do that? Their safety in numbers, you're dead right. Why is there safety in numbers? Haha, <laughs> well, there's a good point there. The thing is, you see, does anyone know the natural wild predator of the wood pigeon? Come on. Peregrine. Not the man with a gun, no, 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 the wild natural predator. Exactly, the sparrowhawk and the peregrine falcon. If you were a single pigeon, like this fellow here, out in the middle of Farmer Brown's pea field, and a peregrine comes over at a thousand feet, it's good night to you. If you're one of a hundred, or one of a thousand, better still, it's called the law of averages. But very often, far better than you can actually buy in the shops. Movement. Notice that bird there, or any of these three, there's just nothing happening. They look like birds, but they're not real, and the pigeons know it. So we're going to make them come alive, and there's nothing so simple as this. In my bag I've got all kinds of bits and pieces. Notice what I've done, I'll just do the three we've got here, but you'll get some idea of what I've uh, been doing since the 1970s. That goes back a year or two, doesn't it? There, if you have a look at that, you'll notice suddenly now, by getting a piece of fishing line and putting it at the point of balance of your decoy, 
Now you'll find you can get that simulation of realism and movement. And it's that simple little thing that makes such a vast difference to a pigeon decoy as art. See what I mean? These decoys, they're looking a little bit battered now. That's because I didn't protect them in me, in me rucksack. So when you get your decoys, paint them up really carefully, accurately match that of a real bird, and keep your decoys in plastic bags. There you go, that's where most of my decoys go, in these plastic bags. Decoys are interesting because they never wear out when you're using them. They only wear 